Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of Throw. In this video, we're going to be going over conditional statements in C++. Conditional statements allow us to make decisions in our programs and control the flow based on different conditions. So we'll cover things like if, else, and else if. To show you how you can create dynamic programs, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so I have this basic hello world.cpp file that we've been using in our other videos. And I'll go ahead and actually, we don't need this include string. So let's just start with an if statement. So I'm going to create an integer called number, and I'm simply just going to print out to the console, enter a number. After we ask the user to enter a number, we're simply just going to get that input and assign it to our integer called number, like so. And now we're going to use an if statement. So we're going to check if the number is actually greater than zero. So simply by typing the if keyword, we're going to type in number greater than zero. And if this is true, then we need to open our curly bracket to give it a condition. So if this is true, then whatever is in the curly brackets will execute. We're simply just going to print out the number is positive and we'll end the line here. So the if statement allows the program to conditionally execute the block of code inside it only if the condition is true. So let's go ahead and actually try this out. So I'll simply just recompile and run it like so. So I'll enter a number and let's say I do negative 10, then nothing's going to happen. But if I were to run this in, let's do five, then it's going to print out the number is positive as stated in this if statement. But what if the condition is false? So that's where the else comes in. So after I declare the final curly bracket of my if, after this, I can have an else and I'll open another curly bracket. So basically, if this is true, this will happen else this part will happen. So if the number is not greater than zero, then we're simply just going to do the out. The number is not positive like so, and then I'll just end the line here. So now we have two possibilities, if the number is positive and if it's not. So I'll simply recompile and run this code and let's enter a number like negative five and it's gonna say the number is not positive. But we're checking if the number is greater than zero, else. But what if we need to check for more than two conditions? So we're checking if the number is greater than zero or if it's not. So before this else, I'm actually just going to move this down and I'll add an else if and open up curly brackets like so. And inside my else if I actually need to add something such as to check if it's a negative number. So if the number is greater than zero, then we're going to print out the number is positive, positive. Else if, and then after this, if I need to give another condition, so I'm going to say if number is less than zero, then let's go ahead and just simply print out the number is negative. And I'll do an end line and I'm going to change the final statement to say instead of number is not positive because that could come off as number is actually negative. So I'm just going to write the number is zero. And now I can go ahead and just recompile this, run it and let me type in zero. And now it'll say the number is zero because over here we're checking if it's greater than zero, not greater or equal to and number is less than zero and not less than equal to. And we can even do nested if statements. So for example, let me erase the bottom part until we only have this number is greater than zero part. And now I'll create some, I'll create a few lines after the number is positive, like so. And then I'm going to check for another if. So if number percent two is equal to zero, then I'm simply just going to print out it is also an even number. So kind of like in our previous videos, we discussed what this percent mean. This is modulo, which just means there is no remainder at the end of this. So for example, if we did something like 10 over five is equal to two, there is no remainder. So we'll simply print out if number percent two is equal to zero, then it's an even number else. We'll just print out it is an odd number like so. So let's go ahead and run this program. So I'll do something like 10 and it's going to say that 10 is positive and also an even number. And if I were to run it again and do something like five, it's going to say five is positive and it is an odd number. So as you can see, the program correctly checks each condition and prints the appropriate message based on the user input. Conditional statements like if, else, and else if allows us to make decisions based on our programs to handle multiple outcomes. So to summarize, we've covered if, else, and else if statements. If this video helped you understand conditional statements in C++, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Code of the Row for more beginner-friendly tutorials. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.